Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and before I comment on the Gospel reading, usually it's the Gospel reading that we comment on because that's our, our Lord's words. I just wanted to remind you we are still doing the Novena for Life, which is being organized by the Knights of Columbus. As I mentioned the other day, it's, it's an American version, so we're just going to do the American version. That's okay. And also, uh, some have requested that we try to broadcast an entire Mass. So we will be doing that this coming Wednesday, May 13th. It's just an optional memorial for Our Lady of Fatima, but we decided to honor Our Lady more so, especially because um, Our Lady of Fatima is very important. But the month of May is dedicated to Our Lady. And today we also celebrate Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there, to my own mom especially. And I, I also wanted to mention the gospel reading that it, for those of you who have been following the daily mass or the daily homilies, you will have noticed that this reading actually occurred in two parts, one part on Friday, one part on Saturday. So it is a passage that I have already commented on. So I'm going to try to talk about something different today, but related, so some of it may be the same. But I mention this for those of you who perhaps have not been able to watch Daily Mass or the Daily Homilies. So if you want more uh, reflection on this Gospel passage, look at the homily for Friday as well as for Saturday. So in today's Gospel reading, our Lord is telling them not to have their hearts troubled. He's saying this just before he's going to undergo his passion and death. And then he points out that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. So it's only through Christ that we have salvation. And then Thomas asked to, or it's Philip actually, uh, Philip asked, uh, to show us the Father and we will be satisfied. In other words, Philip wants to see the Father with his own eyes. And our Lord is saying that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So God is invisible. You cannot see him. But basically what our Lord is saying is that if you look at my life, if you spent all this time with me, then you will know what the Father is like and you will be able to say that you have seen the Father. So our Lord makes this very clear if we, if we read it in context. What I wanted to focus on or to start with is... Um, if you know, our Lord says, if you know me, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and have seen him. So, to know the Father. And, and I spoke a little bit about this, uh, perhaps yesterday or maybe Friday, that how do we get to know God? And basically, we need to know what he's all about. We need to read the scriptures with a focus, especially on the Gospels, but also to meditate on these, to, to go deeper. But I, I wanted to relate to you um, a story. It's, it's not a story. It's, it's something that actually happened. It was a talk that I heard by a priest related to this. And this priest was an extremely good speaker, and he was extremely good with young people. And I don't remember all the details of his, his talk, but there is one point that I wanted to, to emphasize. So he's, he's celebrating Mass with a group of young people, and he's engaging them in the homily, in a dialogue. And he asks them, you know, why should we believe in God? So assuming that, that people believe that God exists, why should we believe in God? And he, he wants answers from the students. And sometimes doing this is very beneficial because the students realize, oh, other young people have good ideas also. So why should we believe in God? Well, there's many benefits to believing in God. So by believing in God and living our faith, we become better persons, more loving persons. We are less likely to fall into sinful situations or bad situations. So our faith can actually protect us from evil and harm uh, in the world that we live in. Believing in God can also give us hope for something beyond this world. Believing in God can also strengthen us in our ability to do the things that we need to do, knowing that God is with us, knowing that we receive the blessings of, of God to help us to do that. So no matter what difficult situation we are in, we can always have hope. We can always 
know that God is close to us. So there's many benefits to believing. But then the priest goes on, well, why do you believe? So these are all good reasons, but what is your personal reason for believing? In other words, why do you have faith? And basically the question is, how do you know that God exists? So the students get, start giving all kinds of different answers. Well, there's philosophical proofs for the existence of God. There's all kinds of miracles. There's the Shroud of Turin. There's historical evidence for Christ. And they go on and on and on. But then the priest, once again, he says, but why do you believe in God? And of course, the students are stumped. They, they, they don't know what to say. But the point that he was trying to make is he next says that the, I want to tell you the reason why I believe in God, not just because of all that evidence, not just because of all those arguments that you present me with. But the reason that I believe in God is because I know God. I don't just know about him. I know God. And this is a very significant point that I wanted to draw your attention to. So, for example, I have a brother. I could tell you all about, uh, all about my brother, so you might know a whole lot about him. In the same way, you could read a lot about Jesus, you could even reflect on Scripture, you could even meditate on Scripture, so you might end up knowing a lot about Jesus. But there's a huge difference between knowing about my brother, knowing about Jesus, knowing about God, and actually knowing him personally. In other words, it's only when you encounter my brother and interact with him that you will really know him. So the point is that we are all called to know him. So the reason the priest is able to say that he knows him is because the priest related how he has experienced the presence of God in his life, in his life of prayer, the graces that he has re received. I've alluded to some of these things even in my own life, how sometimes I remember things, and it's not because I was trying to search my memory, but God revealed things to me, helped me to remember. So because I try to be prayerful, I experience the inspirations of God in prayer, the enlightenments that he gives me. So it's often, especially during prayer, that I see things in a different perspective. It's not because of my intelligence, but it's because God is revealing himself to me. So the priest was emphasizing that he has this personal relationship with God. He has experienced the presence of God in his life. And the question is, well, how do we experience this or how can you experience the presence of God more fully? And the key is, is our life of prayer. So in other words, if somebody is just rattling off their prayers, just going through the motions, not really giving God much time, they're not going to have a very good relationship with God. So we do have to pray. And one of the prayers that is most often encouraged by various apparitions of Our Lady that have been approved by the Church is the prayer of the Rosary. And as you know, the prayer of the Rosary is a very meditative prayer. So when we recite the Hail Marys, we're not really focusing on saying it well. Um, sometimes people do make an effort to pray even the words from, from their hearts, but it's also a meditative prayer. So the, the actual words are, it's kind of like a back, background or a backdrop to the meditation. Personally, I find it very hard to meditate, and that's why I like the, what John Paul II, Saint John Paul II encouraged when he put out the apostolic letter on the rosary, is sometimes even before you begin the decade to spend some quiet time meditating on the mystery and then to pray, pray, pray the Our Father and the Ten Hail Marys. And this is actually something that we've recently been encouraged to do in the Legion of Mary when we pray the rosary together, to pause before each mystery after introducing it and to meditate on it. So in order to grow in our relationship with God, yes, we have to know about him. And we do get to know him more fully by meditating on the Gospels, uh, especially the words and actions of our Lord, but we really and truly get to know him through an intense life of prayer. And this is why it's so beneficial to spend quality time with God in prayer. Now, I had re re referred to the rosary, and of course that brings to mind Our Lady. So it's, it's Our Lady who encouraged the rosary through all these apparitions, in other words, God through Our Lady. But Our Lady is very much 
present in the rosary, especially because we pray the Hail Marys. So we also, it's not only getting to know Jesus, but getting to know Our Lady. And when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, basically it's a reminder that we are called to imitate him, to to uh, follow after him to the best of our abilities. Now, for different people, it will be different degrees of following our Lord. Not everybody is called to abandon all worldly pursuits and to dedicate their life to God, such as priests and religious brothers and sisters. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and we are called to imitate Jesus. And we can ask the question, did Jesus love his mother Mary? Oh, obviously he did. And I'm sure all of us who had fairly decent mothers very much love our mothers. So we love our parents, we love our our mothers, and so we are called to love Our Lady. Now, if you recall in the, I believe it's in the Magnificat of Our Lady, it says, all generations will call me blessed. Now, part of the reason I want to focus on Our Lady is because today is Mother's Day and we honor our earthly mothers, but we should also honor our spiritual, heavenly mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. So Our Lady says, all generations will call me blessed. And this is the inspired word of God. So this is the revelation of God. But if you think about it, it's really only Catholics and the Orthodox that really honor Our Lady and call her blessed. So if you ask non-Catholic Christians, yes, they will acknowledge that certainly she's a very blessed woman. She's the mother of Christ. She's the mother of God. They will acknowledge that. But you see, as Catholics, we have feasts in honor of Our Lady. In other words, we we don't just acknowledge that she is blessed. We proclaim it. We advertise it. We, We celebrate the fact that she is the Mother of God. So it's only in the Catholic and the Orthodox tradition that we truly honor Our Lady as our Lord wants us to. So... I would want you to respect and honor my mother. Our Lord wants us to respect and honor his mother. I recall seeing a uh, an episode of the, the Journey Home program on EWTN. So I don't usually watch TV, but when I go to my parents' place, they often uh, watch EWTN, and then, of course, I, I join them. And there's a lot of very good things on EWTN. It's, it's probably the best Catholic broadcasting available uh, 24 hours a day. So uh, I encourage you to, to watch EWTN. You can get it online also. But it was this conversion. So the Journey Home program is, is about people converting, coming back to the faith or, or converting from a different faith or from atheism to Catholicism. So sometimes they have very interesting stories and sometimes miraculous events occur in their, in their stories also. So there was this one particular episode and this individual, he, uh, he was doing some rock climbing. He fell from a very large height and miraculously he, he was spared death. But he he was having trouble with his marriage, and they were on the verge of divorce, he and his wife. And he had a vision of Christ, and it was definitely a revelation of God. So he had a vision of Christ, and not just a vision of Christ, but a vision of Christ crucified. And so he saw Christ on the cross from the side, and our Lord turned and looked directly at him and asked him, why do you hate my mother? And of course, he was very much uh, struck by this this vision and, and perplexed by the question, but it caused him to ponder. And he realized that he did indeed hate the Blessed Virgin Mary. And in fact, he came to realize that he hated all women, including his wife, And that was part of the reason they were having marital problems. So why did he hate all women? And he reveals it on this episode of The Journey Home. And the reason he hated all women is because his mother had given him up for adoption. And so he felt rejected. He felt unloved. And he had a grudge against his mother. He was not willing to forgive his mother. And he transferred this anger that he had towards his mother towards all women. 
So especially when we are young and, and we know that you know, we were adopted or, or something bad happens to us, we can carry that psychological problem along with us all our lives. So this is basically what happened to him. So he had to come to the realization and the understanding that his mother wasn't rejecting him. His mother, his, his biological mother, she gave him up for adoption, not because she didn't care for him, not because she didn't love him, but because she did care for him. The mother realized she couldn't care for the child herself, and so she wanted him to have a good upbringing, a good life. So once he understood that even his biological mother, who gave him up for adoption, truly loved him, he was able to overcome his hatred of women and eventually develop a love for all women, including the Blessed Virgin Mary. So the point I'm trying to make is that, yes, we need to know God, we need to know our Lord, we need to know the Blessed Virgin Mary and the love that she has for us, but we also need to know and reflect on the love that our mothers have for us. And some women, they, they acknowledge that it's only when they become mothers themselves, oh, now I understand why my mother acted this way and did this and did that. In other words, mothers are totally self-giving. Mothers are full of love. And imagine the most perfect human mother that you can conceive of apart from Our Lady. Well, Our Lady's love, Our, Our Lady's motherly tenderness is far greater than any love that any other woman in the world could have. And if we understand this, we would obviously be drawn to Our Lady. This, this episode of the journey home, the, the man made a very profound statement, and he said, ultimately, every human being is looking and searching for the perfect father and the perfect mother. Not to say that our parents weren't good, not to say that we're not satisfied with them, but he's saying that we're still searching for this perfect father and this perfect mother. In other words, we're still a lot like children, which is what our Lord tells us to be, to become like children. And, he's, and he, he made the statement that it's in God and in Our Lady that we find the perfect father and the perfect mother. And they are always there for us. They, we may not always get everything we ask for them, but they are always there to comfort us, to, to help us in our difficulties, to give us the graces that we need. So Our Lady is the greatest intercessor uh, in, in, order, in, in order to enable us to receive an abundance of God's blessings and graces. And so today, I encourage you to manifest your, your love, your thanksgiving to your own earthly mothers, but also please do so towards our Heavenly Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Thank you.